There's a lot of problems with the water. There was um, color, odor, taste problems, um, bacteria in the water, lots of disinfectant, chlorine out of the water. Um, but the missing ingredient was something called corrosion control. And um, that made the water like 20 times more corrosive than, it, than the water we had been getting from the Great Lakes. There was a, a lot of trust that was broken. There was a lot of people who had skin issues. People, some people got Legionnaire's disease, which is a pneumonia, and some people died from that, from the water. Um, and then also we had this kind of, you know, population-wide lead exposure. It affected me in many ways. So obviously, um, you know, doing this research um, as quickly as possible to see what was going on. Uh, public is sharing the, the research. It affected me by all that backlash. So all of these things are because of the water crisis. Some are good things and some are bad things. Um, but I think it's, it's um, all of these things have been grounded in kind of doing what's best for kids, not just in Flint, but kids all over. Flint's story is not a unique story. It's not about this one city that had a water crisis. Flint's a story of infrastructure that is crumbling in our nation. It's a story of what happens when we don't listen to science. It's a story of inequities. It's a story of how we treat children. It's a story of environmental racism. These are not unique to Flint stories. These are everywhere stories. Despite all of these bad things, the story of Flint is also this really awesome story of resistance, of um, disruption, of refusing to accept the status quo of everyday people coming together and saying, no, we can do better, we can do better on behalf of kids, um, and then really building a model of hope and recovery. So yes, Flint's story was terrible, but yes, we have been able to do some really awesome things, not just in Flint, but, but also nationally. Clean, clear water is a baseline expectation. The primary issue is a discoloration or cloudy water when they turn on their washer, run a bath, a shower, or uh, wash dishes or get a drink of water. So it's, it's primarily an aesthetic issue dealing with color. The primary uh, genesis for discoloration in, in the water is rust and sediment throughout our distribution system. And that is common in every municipal drinking water system. Running your tap and, and, and seeing brown, rust, discolored water is very disconcerting to our residents. And a lot of people want to ensure that their drinking water is safe um, and they should have the expectation that it is safe. Um, so I think it's a quality of life issue and I think people are, are perturbed um, and troubled deeply when, when on a consistent basis they have water that is deemed as not being clean um, but it, it is lacking in clarity. I've gone to the faucet to get, get a glass of water to drink and it has been uh, discolored. And like I said earlier, it's, it's an annoyance, it's, it's troubling. Um, and I've reported that to staff and uh, you know, I'm pleased to report, as I mentioned earlier, that the number of water quality complaints have diminished greatly from a year and a half ago. We have offered internal tests to residents and business owners, and we've also partnered with our friends at Washtenaw County Public Health Department to also offer water tests. None of the water tests that have been conducted over the past three or four years have indicated that the water, the drinking water, is unsafe. It's purely an aesthetic issue. It's brown, it's rust colored, it has, um, it has sediment in it. It's not unsafe to consume, but it is unattractive and unappealing. I want to know about the problems and more importantly, I want to help resolve them. 
doing an inspection of all of the valves throughout our distribution system to make sure that they're uh, functioning properly, properly, that they're not closed or partially closed. Um, and then doing main flushings, routine, consistent, thorough main flushings of the entire distribution system in both the spring and fall. And then when weather permits, doing main flushing of all of the dead end lines. Because what we find at, uh, in our dead end lines is that's where a lot of that sediment and rust collects.